Ms. Yeah. Williamson, like this is a question for you. Like you we've been excuse me, excuse me. I'm addressing the question, Ms. Williamson. We've been talking a lot about access to health insurance, but for many Americans, their most pressing concern is the high cost of health care. How would you lower the cost of prescription drugs? Well, first of all, the government should never have made the deal with the big pharma that they couldn't negotiate. That was just part of the regular corruption by which multinational corporations have their way with us. You know, I want to say that while I agree with, I'm, I'm with Senator Bennett and others, but I agree with almost everything here, I'll tell you one thing. It's really nice that we've got all these plans, but if you think we're going to beat Donald Trump by just having all these plans, you've got another thing coming. Because he didn't win by saying he had a plan. He won by simply saying, make America great again. We've got to get deeper than just these superficial fixes, as important as they are. Even if we're just talking about the superficial fixes, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have a health care system in the United States. We have a sickness care system in the United States. We just wait till somebody gets sick, and then we talk about who's going to pay for the treatment and how they're going to be treated. What we need to talk about is why so many Americans have unnecessary chronic illnesses, so many more compared to other countries. And that gets back into not just the, health, the uh, big pharma, not just health insurance companies. It has to do with chemical policies. It has to do with right. environmental policies. It has expired. to do with food policies. It has to do with drug Thank policies. You. Thank it you. has Senator, to do with environmental Senator policies. Senator Bennett, a question. Ms. Williamson. Yes, what Donald Trump has done to these children, and it's not just in Colorado. Governor, you're right, it is kidnapping, and it's extremely important for us to realize that. If you forcibly take a child from their parents' arms, you are kidnapping them. And if you take a, a lot of children and you put them in a detainment center, thus inflicting chronic trauma upon them, that's called child abuse. This is collective child abuse. And when this is crime, both of those things are a crime. And if your government does it, that doesn't make it less of a crime. These are state-sponsored crimes. Uh, and, what President, <clears throat> and what President Trump has done is not only attack these children, not only demonize these immigrants, he is attacking a basic principle of America's moral core. We open our hearts to the stranger. This is extremely important. And it's also important for all of us to remember, and I have great respect for for everyone who is on this on this on this stage, but we're going to talk about what to do about health care. Well, where have you been, guys? Because if it's it's not just a matter of a plan, and I haven't heard anybody on this stage who has talked about American foreign policy in Latin America and how we might have, in the last few decades, contributed to something being more. Senator helpful. Gillibrand. All of these issues are extremely important, but there are specifics. There are symptoms, and the underlying cause has to do with deep, deep, deep realms of racial injustice, both in our criminal justice system and in our economic system. And the Democratic Party should be on the side of reparations for slavery for this very reason. I do not believe, I do not believe that the average American is a racist, but the average American is woefully undereducated about the history of race in the United States. I, I would would like to say, one moment. Just trust us on this. Somebody We're has gonna... a younger body doesn't mean you don't have old ideas. No, we didn't do ideas. John Kennedy, John Kennedy <laughs> did not ideas. say, John Kennedy did not say I have a plan to get a man to the moon, and so we're going to do it, and I think we can all work together, and maybe we can get a man on the moon. And John Kennedy said, by the end of this decade, we are going to put a man on the moon. Because John Kennedy was back in the day when politics included the people, and included imagination, and included great dreams, and included great plans. Ms. And Williams, I have had a career Williams, not making the political plans, but I have had a career harnessing the inspiration and the motivation and the excitement of people, Thank you, masses Ms. Williams, of people, sir. when we know that when we say we are going to turn from a dirty economy Thank to a you. clean economy, we're going to have a Green New Deal. We're going to create millions of jobs. We're going to do this within the next 12 years because I'm not interested in just winning the next election. We are Thank interested you, in our grandchildren. All right, we got to sneak. We're going to sneak in a break. And I'm going to go down the line here, and I'm asking you, please, for one or two words only. All right, <laughs> please. Really? President Obama in his first year wanted to address both health care and climate, and he could only get one signature issue accomplished. It was obviously health care. He didn't get to do climate change. You may only get one shot and your first issue that you're going to push, you get one <coughs> shot that it may be the only thing you get past. What is that first issue for your presidency? And Ms. Williamson, My first the last call word. is to Prime Minister of New Zealand. 
who said that her goal is to make New Zealand the place where it's the best place in the world for a child to grow up. And I will tell her girlfriend you are so on, because the United States of America is going Bank. to be the best place in the world for a child to grow Line. up. And this is what this question is, which is, you're going to have to re, you're likely going to have to reset a relationship between America and, an, and another country or entity if you become president because of, perhaps because of some relationship that you just mentioned about President Trump. What is the first relationship you like to reset as president? I'm going to go down the line and I'll start with Ms. Williamson. Well, one of my first phone calls would be to call the European leaders and say, we're back. Because I totally Thank understand you. how important it is that the United States be part of the okay. Western Alliance. I want, I'm trying to get one, one or two words here. 45 seconds to your closing I'm statement. sorry we haven't talked more tonight about how we're going to beat Donald Trump. I have an idea about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is not going to be beaten just by insider politics talk. He's not going to be beaten just by somebody who has plans. He's going to be beaten by somebody who has an idea what this man has done. This man has reached into the psyche of the American people, and he has harnessed fear for political purposes. So, Mr. President, if you're listening, I want you to hear me, please. You have harnessed fear for political purposes, and only love can cast that out. So I, sir, I have a feeling you know what you're doing. I'm going to harness love for political purposes. I will meet you on that field. And, sir, love will win. 